G'day cocktail lovers, it's kitchen time again, specifically barrel time again. This is my third barrel. I'm a bit obsessed, but I'm pretty sure this is the last one I'm getting. The first one currently has Maker's Mark in it. Previously, I seasoned it with some port and then aged a cocktail in it. The second one has a cocktail aging in it, previously having been seasoned with port. This one just finished seasoning with port, so I'm going to make a cocktail and put it in. Now, this is inspired by a visit to a local distillery, a gin distillery called Brogan's Way. Great place, great people, great drinks, great food too. I really enjoy being there. Uh, the distiller there, he'd done a barrel aged cocktail. It was amazing. It's one of the best I've ever had. And it was loosely inspired by an aviation. Aviation, bit of a classic cocktail. It's mostly gin. You have some maraschino, uh, some creme de violette, and lemon juice. It's, it's a fairly simple cocktail, and he actually played with that. Didn't go literally along those lines. Didn't put lemon juice in because it's not advised to use lemon juice when you're barrel aging. The lemon juice could go off. He did some syrups, fruits, and flowers, and gave it its whole individual spin, and because it was a spin on an aviation and it was in a barrel, he called it a barrel roll. So what I'm going to do, it's, it's the angry barrel roll, my spin on it. And to put it together, mostly gin. And I decided, okay, okay, time to clear the decks. Or at least clear some shelf space. Oh, then I can buy some more bottles to fill that clear shelf space. So I just basically emptied a couple of bottles that I had that had a little bit left in it. They were both quite citrus forward gins. And then I put in a couple hundred mils of what we call a new world gin. Uh, that's a lot more savory, at least on the gin spectrum. And then a couple of hundred mils of a dry gin. Rather than putting lemon juice in, I put in 100 mils of limoncello. I thought that would be interesting. Now I did put in some maraschino liqueur, a locally made maraschino. I did put in some creme de violette and inspired by the distiller at Brogan's Way, I did a couple of syrups that I'd made with stuff that was growing locally. One, for Joa, not a local fruit, but was growing in a neighbor's yard and ripening. So I made a syrup with for Joas. And I also, with an Australian native called Lily Pilly, also known as Rivery, which is growing in my yard and was fruiting. And that makes this lovely red syrup. So I think there's a bunch of interesting flavors in there and they're going to sit for up to four weeks, I will taste occasionally. But there's a couple things I want to taste now. First up is the port and sweet vermouth mix that I used to season the barrel. I saved some of it before it was in the barrel, and this is some that's come out of the barrel after two weeks. I wanna see if there's a difference in taste, let's see. Not a huge change, which is interesting. Also, it didn't evaporate much. I'd had it in the barrel for two weeks. It's probably some very slight evaporation, but not much. So I'll probably, use, well, I'll probably use this as a sweet vermouth in cocktails, but also, no, I don't have to season any more barrels. I promised I wasn't buying any more, didn't I? Anyway, it's probably my go-to sweet vermouth, even though it's a mix of port and sweet vermouth now. The other thing I'm going to taste is the works in progress. The Maker's Mark, which has been in for about a month, and I was planning on leaving it in for two months, and the cocktail which I was planning on leaving in for about four weeks. It's at about the three week mark. The cocktail is a version of a cocktail called uh, Colonial Ties, which is itself basically a riff on a Sazerac. It's like a split base Sazerac. So this was 50% rum, 50% whiskey, uh, a little bit of absinthe, enough to simulate rinsing a glass with absinthe and uh, some bitters. Uh, and there was actually four sorts of whiskey and four sorts of rum just because I could. I made a whole video of putting that together and it's lost. I, del I don't know. I blame it on the COVID actually. COVID brain fog. I think that's when it happened. I think when I lost that video. Unless even making the video was a COVID fever dream. I don't know. And um, okay. I, I haven't forgotten which is which. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to taste them. I should be able to tell by tasting them. Okay, well that's got to be the cocktail. That's more complex than just um, bourbon in that. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's pretty nice. It's got some nice mixing of the uh, rums and the 
uh, whiskies. He said, foolishly, not knowing for sure what this one was. I was right. That's the bourbon. That's the much more straight ahead taste of bourbon. Um, I'm definitely leaving that for a while longer. I'm also, when I get to the final taste, I'll have some straight out of the bottle maker's mark to compare it to. Uh, but this one, I wasn't sure. I tasted it a, a couple of days ago. I thought it wasn't tasting right, but I'm liking it now. Maybe it's just the mood I was in the other day. But I probably will leave this for another week and uh, have a grand tasting. I think I saved some of this before it went in the barrel so I could do a side by side with the final thing. The same dealio with the Maker's Mark. Uh, I'm gonna taste some side by side. And I've already got plans for the barrels beyond that. Uh, the one with the cocktail will become free. My plan is to age some new make spirit, which I bought from the same people who make the barrels. So that's unaged whiskey, basically. So that ought to be interesting. And when I'm finished with the maker's mark and the bourbon, for a laugh, I'm going to barrel age vodka, believe it or not, is what I am barrel aging next, because I just thought that would be a fun experiment. So I'm going to have stuff going on with these for months. Probably should remember to label the barrels so I don't forget which is which. Uh, but I'll give you the progress reports and you get to see another one of my shirts sometime in the next couple of weeks. Well, for you, it'll be in the next couple of seconds. For me, it'll be uh, a week to a month from now. Tasting time. First up, I'm going to do the cocktails because I think they will be milder and my palate won't be overwhelmed. First, super obvious difference, the colour. I saved some of the cocktail before putting it in the barrel. It came out of the barrel like this. I'm not sure if I'll get any difference on the nose. Hmm, smells like gin. Ooh, that's got a sort of earthier note. I guess that's the wood. That's the wood from the barrel. Not really surprising. It's got a somewhat earthier note. Now the taste test. It's not bad. I didn't actually taste this cocktail before putting it in the barrel. That was my first taste of it. It's floral. It's got that typical sort of aviation profile in it, although it's a little bit separate from an aviation. But the barrel roll, my version of the barrel roll. It's certainly a richer flavor. I'm going to do another quick side by side. It was pretty boozy, both of them. It's very nice. Uh, I think it might uh, benefit by being stirred on ice, getting slightly diluted. But if I'm in the mood for a boozy but floral cocktail, I've got it made now. Next up, the whiskey. Super obvious difference in the color. It's much, much darker having been in the barrel. This was in the barrel for two months. So uh, on the nose, I mean, that's Maker's Mark bourbon. That's, that's not a big surprise, but the barrel aged. Hmm, not a huge difference on the nose. Uh, probably less sharp, but now taste wise, because I don't drink Maker's Mark a lot. It's a bourbon. It's a very sort of workhorse bourbon there. Uh, not stellar, not outstanding, but nothing wrong with it. Now, the barrel-aged version. It's, it's instantly smoother. That was the first thing I noticed drinking it. And then the smoke from the barrel comes through in the end, which I don't know how psychological that is because of course, this is aged in charred barrels. That's bourbon. It's aged in new barrels that have been charred. And I've uh, I just finished this in my barrel that's been seasoned uh, with a port and sweet vermouth mix and then with a cocktail. So it's got residual color and flavors from the other drinks that have been in. This color is not really from the barrel because this has been in a barrel for a number of years. So two months is not going to make that big a difference. The big difference is there was other things in the barrel that flavored and seasoned it. Hmm. I think I want an old fashioned made with this. I made an old fashioned. <laughs> oh, okay, that's the stuff. I love an old fashioned. Now, I've made this one really simple, just a fairly straightforward sugar syrup. 
uh, Angostura bitters, twist of orange. Mm. Okay, that's a class old fashioned. So the big answer to the question, is it worth barrel aging uh, whiskey if you got it? Uh, depending what you want out of it, my answer is yes. I very rarely sip whiskies or any spirits straight. I'm almost always mixing them in cocktails. An old fashioned is a great standby for me, uh, not just with whiskey, with some other spirits as well, but uh, this barrel aged one, mm. really subtly, but there's a lot going on. And I have had old fashions made with Maker's Mark and they were fine, but this is coming into its own in a mixed drink. So I think I'll also be using it in other cocktails down the road. But now I know it makes a good old fashioned, I'm happy. So yeah, uh, throwing out there, barrels, they're fun. You should try it if you can get a hold of one because you're only limited by imagination. My next project, believe it or not, is going to be vodka in a barrel because what's vodka good for? Experiments, basically. So sometime months from now, there'll be a video with barrel aged vodka and we'll see what that tastes. But for now, I hope you stay well and until I see you again, cheers.